Okay, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> in our uh, in our JavaFX little kind of GUI uh, s GUI setup uh, series here, <clears throat> what we've done is we've we've set up the ability to um, create users uh, to have a um, to have a uh, themed background here. Although I'm not sure if I love the colors because they're a little hard to read. Um, and we've talked about the ability to pass information from one scene to the next. Um, in this case, we have a person object, and we're really just displaying the attributes of the person object. Now, with this, uh, one of the things we might want to do is uh, we might want to upload a file. If you remember uh, when we created our person objects, if we go back here, it's on our, uh, our screen here <clears throat> for the table view controller. Just zoom in a bit here. We created some default. Um, default users here and <clears throat> what this uh, initial list did is it set up um, our, our, our users however it didn't really give us the ability other than right here to change the image or update the image for our user and there's some great utilities already built into Java for um, choosing files and we haven't used them yet so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a look in our detailed person view. So again, when this launches, when we click on, on a person, for example, Frank Sinatra here, and I click on the detailed person view, comes in and we can create, or we, we can view the uh, content of, uh, of this person. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is go into that view and we're gonna add a little extra code. So here's our person view and our person view controller. So if I double click this, it's going to open up our scene builder. Okay. And in our view box, we have, um, <clears throat> we have uh, the grid pane, the image, and we have this one button here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another button underneath the image, which will allow us to change the image. So let's Take a button and add it to our view box. It's going to show up right there, and then it's going to say change image. Okay, and save. And then in the person view controller, we need to set up a few things here to make this work. First thing is we're going to need uh, to. Um, have something called a file chooser uh, launch. And file chooser is a uh, utility built into uh, Java, in the JDK. So what we're gonna do is right here, I'm going to say private file chooser. Okay, so I'm gonna define a file chooser. It's gonna complain because we don't have the imports yet. We can see it's JavaFX stage file chooser. And what happens is the um, <clears throat> we're gonna use this file chooser to create a file object. And that will read from our from our hard drive. Let's go down here create a new method. I'm going to break this into two videos. One's going to allow us to change the image on the screen, and then the next video will show how we can actually use that to update our person object and pass it back to the previous, uh, the previous uh, screen. So, um, <clears throat> here what we're going to do is, we're going to say public And in order to uh, get the parent of this window, we actually need to trigger something called an action event. Okay. So 
I go to the event, which is our, going to be in our window, and I'm going to get the source, and then I'm going to get the scene. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Then I can get the scene that we're currently in, and then I can get the actual oh, get the actual window. Get window. So what this does is just like when we had, um, you know, if you look back to uh, how we launched this whole thing to start with, you know, we have to get a stage, okay? And the initial way that the that the program launches is the stage is passed in from the start method, and in this case, we need to get that stage. So that's what this is. This bit of code is doing here is we're using the actual event. We get the source. Then we get the scene, and then we get the window, which is synonymous with the stage itself. And then we can say file chooser equals a new file chooser. Okay. And it's great, just like any other window, you can set the title. And we can say open image. And then <clears throat> that's going to set up our file chooser. So now we can say file chooser. Oh, sorry. I'll come back to filtering in a second. My goodness, sorry. I wanted to do this in a certain order. <laughs> uh, so we'll take the file path. That's going to be equal to file chooser. And when you do show open dialog, and we pass in the stage. So what this does is it allow control to be passed over to our, our file chooser. So I'll hit save here. Now we can go back to our view, click on the button, go to the code. And we can select that method. Make sure that you save when you go from one to the next. Okay. So at this point, we've got the start of something here. So we launch, pick a person, now we can change the image. And you can see it opens up this file chooser. And uh, what's fantastic is, you know, you can, you can search the default uh, location is unfortunately just your computer or your C drive. And that's not that useful for a lot of people because now they, you know, maybe they want to navigate somewhere. Uh, in my case, I've got some favorites set up so I could just jump to them. But it's usually a little cleaner if we open it up in the user's specific directory. So the way that we can do that We can actually just build a little bit of code to set that up. So, So here the idea is we're going to set up the this uh, user's directory based on whatever the user home is. It's a special key. And then we'll check it to see if it exists. So if not, if you cannot read this user directory, Okay. 
But if we can read it, then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, <coughs> file chooser. Okay, we'll set our utility and we'll set the initial directory to be this user directory. So now when we launch this, <coughs> When I change the image, see how it goes <clears throat> to my personal directory, right? Uh, so now I can directly access my typical things like my documents and my pictures and whatnot if I didn't have these favorites set up. But we can take it one step further since we know it's going to be a picture. We can actually add even more to this. We can say the user home plus, we can add another string onto this. We can add on pictures. So if we run it now, it'll actually take us right into my pictures uh, directory. Change image. Now look at this. It goes straight into my um, into my images directory. So this is great. This allows me to you know pick on a car or something uh, right away. Uh, <clears throat> let's close that. But to actually set the image, what happens is when you use the file chooser, it's going to pass back um, a file path. And <clears throat> um, what we want to do is try, or sorry, a file, and we want to try to read that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to update the image by. We're going to do a little try here, and what we're going to catch is an I/O exception. So here is, so we have this image IO class and it's going to try to read a file. And the file that it's going to read is this file path that we've created here. Okay, so it's going to try to read that file and create something called a buffered image. is doing here is creating the actual image. So if you look in our person um, object here, let me zoom in a bit, amongst, amongst the different uh, items that we had set up for our person, we had this idea of an image, right? So we store an image for the person. So <clears throat> um, in here, I think we have this method set image. So we have to pass in an image object and really the magic uh, or the, this extra little bit of code that we're doing here is really to read from um, the file system. It doesn't go directly into a type of image, but we can create a buffered image and then we can use uh, this FX image method here to create an image. Let's bring in our... different little utilities. Okay, our classes. And then all we have to do is we have here, we passed in a, this selected person, right? So if you remember our, um, what we're displaying is the selected person. And here we're going to set image. And you see it assumes to set the image. And then the image on the screen, we need to update that as well right now. So we've updated the actual object, but now we need to kind of refresh that image on the screen. 
So to do that, um, let's see what we called it. We called it photo. So we go to our person and we get their image. So let's try, oh, we got a layer here. What does this say? Image cannot be converted to image view. Aha. Yes. So we have photo dot set image image data. Actually, let's try. Let's try this. Didn't, didn't work as I expected. All right, hang on here. Photo. Ah, yes. So the issue here is I'm not, <laughs> I was trying to set uh, my image view to be an image. That wouldn't make sense. Um, but my, I can set the image. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll get that from my person object. Always good to go uh, from the person object. Let's try that now. And there you have it. So now we have the new, uh, the new image stored uh, or visible here on this screen. In the follow up video, what we'll do is we'll talk about, well, how do I now pass this back? Because right now, we just have a back button. It doesn't actually save state. So if we go back into that detailed person view, we're back to this. So in the following video, I'll show how to handle that scenario. Thanks very much.